the next weekly daily Wednesdays where we're taking that midweek break to cover not the gaming news, but the rest of the Linuxy stuff that we've found personally interesting. We're going to try to get out in under 30 minutes or more, guaranteed. Coming up, Nougat has been released for the Raspberry 3, but it kind of needs just a little bit of work and XDA. Well, they've decided to bench the Ryzen's on Linux, and it's kind of surprising. They'll put some oomph in their Linux efforts. Uh, they got some pretty powerful all-in-ones with your choice of Red Hat or Ubuntu. And the Asus Tinkerboard is now available. Good luck getting your hands on one given the specs. The System76 moved to the next step and they are ready to design their own computers. And after a persistent effort not to use neither System D nor BSD, everyone ships their first release candidates. Okay, let's get right into that with the System 76. System what are they up to? Six, right? Yes, they, so they've gone you, crazy. you know them, they've, they've been shipping uh, desktop computers and laptops with Linux. And as, as you may know, they, they're using some third-party uh, cases and hardware and they put uh, all Clevos. of this together. Basically, Clevos. Yeah, yeah. yeah basically, it's a Clev Clevo computers. And now they want to kind of move away from this and start designing their own cases and computers. So it will be just desktop computers at first, but they want to, to progress and like move on to everything, desktops and laptops in the future. Yeah, they definitely uh, say that they're going to be starting with that. Um, I, I think it's going to be quite some time because even they do say on the blog there that the desktops, they're, they're prototyping in acrylic. They're going to be moving to the metal. And mm -hmm. it's like, why not salami? But, uh, yeah, the laptops are way, way out, don't you think, man? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a harder to design uh, a laptop case than, than a desktop. I mean, a desktop case is just like pieces of metal, you just put them together and, and yet yeah, then you're done because yeah it's just it, it's just cases it's not a motherboard we're talking about and in the case in, for laptops i mean i don't know if they're going to go all the way to uh, uh to design the motherboards and everything because um, eh, they might not have to they, redesign the motherboards they, but i could see this bumping up the prices of the laptops specifically because oh all of a sudden we have to design and manufacture the whole shell for this laptop eh, let's bump up the price just a couple of hundred mm. bucks there we go yeah I don't know. I don't, ultimately, I don't know ultimately because the, the, at the, the end the of the price... day this could end up making the prices less because they're not going to be dependent on third parties could be, could but, be. yeah, yeah the, the design the design is a one-step process that would once per uh, per model and it's done so it's kind of evens out between all the the, the sales okay let's go let's from custom made to pre-made yes so uh that other uh company uh, that also sells linux uh pre-baked into hardware is well i guess the most important one right now is dell because they have their hands on just about every single market segment and we've seen their XPS 13s and their, their XPS 15s and their mobile workstation laptops. Now they have all in ones. And I started reading uh, this article comes from ZDNet. I was reading it. Oh, okay. So it's. Um, uh, Murray started singing all of a sudden and distracted me. Uh, uh, it's, um, it's an all in one. It looks all right. It's the Precision uh, Workstation yeah, All-in-One 5720. At, what, 1699 for a base price there, right? Yep, that's the base price. And uh, it comes with the uh, quad-core uh, Intel i5, the base model. Uh, then you can go all the way up to the Xeon E3 1200V6. That's a six-core, 12-thread uh, processor. And I'm I'm thinking, you know what? I, I was always into the idea of all-in-ones. It's like, oh, it's a monitor that has all the specs you need already built into it. You just need to plug in your mouse and your keyboard and power. Boom, you're up and running. But it always came, it was always somewhat disappointing because they always came with glorified laptop parts. And this... This is not the case with these because I had a look at the GPU choices and AMD Fire Pros from the base model up to the 275 watt 
GPU, the one that lets you drive six uh, 2160 P or 4K, if you want to call them that, uh, monitors. Six 4K monitors. Yeah. Uh, and you also have on the NVIDIA side, you also have a bunch of quadros. I uh, think the, the most powerful one, because it's NVIDIA, it's limited to two 4K monitors, but the not so powerful one actually will let you have up to three. But yeah, no, the uh, the TDP is also considerably lower than the Fire Pro, so it's a, a bit of a, um, well, it's your decision really if you're going, if you're looking at one of these, how much money you want to spend versus what you actually need to drive with it. And it's an all-in-one. Uh, yeah, it's an all-in-one. It's also a business machine. Uh, there's everything about the screens business machine. It's not something you want as a personal computer. It's a workstation. And you, you it ships with like professional GPUs like the, the Fire Pro or Quadros. It's not for gaming or stuff like this. Um, it ha- even has a Red Hat option alongside mm-hmm. Ubuntu. Uh, so yeah, it's you would expect a machine like this to be expensive, and it is. I mean, the base price they is are, 1700 yeah. But it's not something you would use at home. It's something you would use in the office or, I mean, at home if you work from home. But uh, I would I kind of see this machine like in a game development studio where they would use uh, Linux to, to develop games using Unreal Engine and Blender. Like th- this kind of scenario, or I, I don't know. Some, but yeah, it's like for uh, I can like very demanding applications. I think work, that's yeah. really good, and you get the Kubuntu option, and if you want to get some real work done, you get the um, Rel option. Twenty seven inches at thirty forty by twenty one sixty, even with the DPI, unless you're going to be using that, which is going to be kind of tricky and pointless when you're doing video. Uh, yeah, it's kind of small, even on my twenty eight inch thirty eight forty by twenty. 160 uh, things are a you, bit tiny. You, you do mm-hmm. realize that's not how DPI works now. You can scale the phones and everything. He forgets who he's talking to, doesn't he? Okay. <laughs> so, X8 developers, Ryzen. man. Uh, we're talking about Ryzen. That's right. In depth look at the AM4 processors on Linux. And finally, they're going to do some Linux to Linux benchmarks. They even threw an Intel processor in. Just for sport, but yeah, what are we looking for? The 8350 versus all the X series, and mm-hmm. you know, they get unboxing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> testing specs. Okay, Give us that. the charts. <laughs> so, basic test platform what do we have? An MSI MOBO, Corsair 16 gigs, Ryzen 7, 18, 17, and well, 17. Oh, yeah, X, about that right. motherboard, they originally tried with the gigabyte motherboard that uh, AMD sent them. Mm-hmm. That didn't work with Linux. Uh, they would have to throw in the no ACPI kernel flag for the desktop to even boot. That, of course, has the nasty side effect of disabling simultaneous multi-threading. That's AMD's implementation of hyper-threading. Well, one the, of the things they did have to do, I mean, uh, it was tested with an updated version of yeah. uh, 410. Kernel uh, 411 didn't really work with the... Um, NVIDIA binary blob. Uh, nope. The, they did a bunch of things here, man. We got Encryptor. We got Java. We got some compile times for the kernel. Old John the Ripper. That's a name I haven't heard in a while. Graphics magic. And I, I was violently a 7-zip, GZ, <laughs> at scrolling through this, looking around, saying, okay, g- give me my handbrake, because I, I wanted to see what the 8350 versus any Ryzen was on Linux, and they, they, they must have known I was looking for that because they didn't include it. Um, <laughs> it was kind of interesting looking at the um, Unigen benchmarks mm-hmm. between um, 8350 versus an 1800X. You're, you're ballparking and being generous, saying there was an 11% increase, and that's in the Valley benchmark. I, I would really have liked to see superposition because that would be a more relevant benchmark in 27 um Strider, so, uh, you're very excited about I, this. I am in great pain. Please help me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, just okay. Uh, well, it was definitely a, gla- a glaring omission not including superposition. Hey. Uh, but no, uh, my takeaway from this is stay away from Gigabyte motherboards because they did eventually get the uh, MSI motherboard up and running and that one worked out of the box no issues with the linux so keep that in mind if you're building a ryzen linux box 
Hmm. Okay. And, you know, if you, again, all those in the show notes, is really, I, I would sit and read off what did what, but it's pretty much on par with every Windows benchmark that you've seen outside of mm-hmm. the compiled times. But uh, this isn't distro watch. This is uh, watching distros. Yeah, so you might know about Dev1. So Dev1 is basically a fork of Debian with systemd removed because some people, they, they, they don't like systemd. And yeah, that's basically it. It's uh, I think that there's a, a bit more to it than just removing systemd. They also removed the... A bunch of other things, and yeah, they 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 still are they're still around, and they managed to to release their first release candidates. So you can uh, expect Dev One One Point to be shipped quite soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the only thing I noticed is like they keep calling themselves and their user base veteran Unix admins. You're not giving yourself more credits, giving yourself that. I mean, I don't know any mainframes or like big servers powered by Dev1. And you know, there's a, a, there's an OS used by actual veteran Unix systems. Yes, it's called Solaris. <laughs> it's, yeah, this, this one, Solaris and BSD. And it doesn't have systemd in it and it's widely used. So yeah, I mean, this, this project was born from hatred of system D and it looks like they haven't looked at the other option there were around. I mean, they, they want to use Debian really hard, but you have this, you have this Debian option to run with the, with BSD, like K free BSD. That's a thing. Man, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I say each to their own. This is coming from somebody who half of the things I've done or created in my life were spawned from hatred. So, <laughs> There, I, there is that. There's currently like eight other distributions using this as a base. And, you know, I have nothing wrong with it. I I don't have the irrational hatred for System D that some people rightfully do, mind you. Rightfully do. And it has caused me some pains in the past. Pedro, um, p- p- put a bow on this one so we can move on. It's uh, it's the release candidate. It's available. It's based on Debian Jesse. Uh, what they did uh, what, and what they spent these past two and a half years doing is getting rid of System D as a dependency for everything. Because if you have a look at your system, a lot of stuff currently depends on System D, especially if you use GNOME as your desktop environment. System D everywhere. So yeah, I could kind of see why they would try their best to get away from it, but it is still based on Debian Jesse, so it's getting a bit long in the tooth, and uh, they say this will be their first long-term support, so it's basically Debian stale, stable without the um, without systemd. Okay, moving on to something that is most definitely quite stable. <laughs> oh yeah, very, very old. Ubuntu 12.04! You remember that. That was uh, the very first time uh, I heard anyone say, Unity is finally usable. And I tried it and I realized it was basically the exact same thing. But we all know how that song and dance went. And the Ubuntu 12.04 hit uh, its end of life or will hit uh, its end of life Man, on no, the 28th no, of April. I was April. looking at their web zone and it's like, oh, do you want to? I, I dare anyone to do a 12.04 to a 16.04 update. Just, <laughs> just, just yeah, record it. Um, no, you can yeah, probably get away with upgrading to 14.04 first, then doing the 16.04, but even then, something's going to break. It's inevitable. But yeah, mm-hmm. the, if you are still using 12.04, end of life happens in a couple of days at the time of recording and probably the time it goes up. So yeah, time to start uh, pondering the uh, the upgrade to at least 14.04. That will be supported until 2022. Yeah, and if your company still relies on 1204, I mean, just check around in your server room and see if your system min is still alive because, I mean, just to be sure. Uh, yeah, and then there are companies like Travis CI, like they do like continuous integration. And this was the most annoying thing because they still rely on 1204 and they waited to the very last minute to offer something more recent. And now like they have published a blog post about it and they are migrating <laughs> not to 16.04, which would be 
like helpful and everything, but they're migrating to the already old 1404. I and mean, how yeah. is that any different from everyone that was using Windows XP, every single company that was using Windows XP and decided to, instead of upgrading, pay Microsoft to extend the support? Hey, man, if I'm running a hosting company, yeah, I'm, I'm moving up to the next LTS. I want something that's been hardened a little bit, Strider. You, uh, you running a data center would just make my day. I want popcorn like on a lifeguard chair and just <laughs> yeah, watch as yeah, the man. fires start. And it would be delightful, but... Let's say, okay, I'm still running the 1204s, and I don't want to change anything right now. Don't worry. I mean, part of ESM support, if, you, if you're throwing out, you know, making it rain on Canonical, $150. I think it's a year. Reasonably priced, really. Yeah. Uh, they will give you the extended support for the security updates and stuff like that. And you can push the problem down the road that you'll end up with. Can't even English today, man. You're going to run into... Anyway, so uh, do we? Do we? Oh yeah, we we have one more uh, little morsel yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. So as we, you would expect, uh, so Canonical has ended like their Unity eight Ubuntu Touch uh, projects, and yeah, they will stop supporting their Ubuntu phones as well. And this is happening quite soon because uh, just like in two months, in in Less uh, than two months, June. Yeah. Yeah, in, in June, uh, they will stop, uh, updates, security patches, and like, uh, you can't submit new applications. Like, that's all gone. And by the end of uh, 2017, uh, the, the, the store, like the app store will cease to exist. So you will not be able to, to download stuff for the Ubuntu phone. So you will be relying on, uh, the community ports, like we talked about UB ports in the past, or you can manage to get Android back. Or hey, the, the Android most of, uh, yeah, most device. of the phones that could run Ubuntu phone were either the Nexus phones mm -hmm. uh, or the BQ Aquarius, uh, the mm -hmm. Spanish phones, which also had Android versions, so it's not probably not going to be that hard to get it's android on one of those yeah. phones no i mean and ultimately at the end of the day this is a crushing blow to seven possibly nine people that are <laughs> yeah. currently actively that's a, using this that's a very positive uh, estimate uh, L, uh, lww cares man hashtag but uh, <laughs> but yeah i i mean the, the thing that genuinely kind of hurts me about this is you thought people were kind of skittish before buying you know, um, a Linux mobile device that's actually pure Linux. Yeah, you know, this just doubled down on it. It's like, oh, not again, you know. Uh, and I, I think a lot of people were looking at Canonical. It's like, why are you doing the phone? Why are you doing tablets? It's it's not ready. It's a good idea, Canonical. Not yet, though. Give, give it another mm -hmm. five years. And that, you know, we kind of rolled into that five years. And like, yeah, all right, bad idea. And closing the store is definitely a death nail to it mm. hopefully we'll see somebody pick up the project I, I don't think we're going to see a lot of community support after the fact of this just due to the fact that these devices you know even with a nexus device if somebody owns um like three nexus tablets I, I put it on and i was like yeah that's neat took it right back off and uh, closing this play store that's just sad and uh what did you say community support yeah um Strider, I mean, this come on, man. These things, these things this, were dead on arrival when they were released. No, this, I'm not hating. I'm stating fact. No, I mean, it, it will be interesting to see if mm -hmm. the community can continue supporting uh, mobile devices. Uh, so far, they're, they, they have done pretty much a good job on it. And let's see if they, they can go through and like manage to, to support in the long run. And you know, yeah, it's not let's something hope that, is... that doesn't end up the same way Cyanogen Mod did. Hmm. Mm. Hey, I got an idea. Pedro, you know, there's a nifty way to uh, help make sure that Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays doesn't end up like Cyanogen Mod did <laughs> out of money. <laughs> well, so long as these 103 fine folks keep on giving us some monies over on the Patreons, we're not going anywhere. Ooh, yep, they're supporting we're here. Linux, baby. I love it. Yeah, we're here four times a week. That's two gaming or prototyping streams plus Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday is what we're doing and Linux Week uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly. Uh, that 
is the guarantee of what we will put up on a weekly basis for your monies. And if you do decide to kick us a few shackles, you get some really nice stuff as well. You get access to our uh, Discord chat and you get early access. That's a bit of a uh, bad term nowadays, but you do get early access to the videos we do, like the Left for Brad series, which we need to get to at some point. Uh, and uh, if we do get up to 200 every week, we can force Jordan to start playing um, Serious M3. Is absolutely no, I mean, it's definitely going to be brilliant. Especially when we hit that 200, we can start the studio upgrade, actually building a legit vertical studio. That's a stand-up studio, big boy stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, th- throwing those shekels into our sales so we can get out there and uh, try to spread the, spread the message in our own special way. And hopefully it's kind of close to the way that you would do it as well. Thanks, everyone, for helping out. But, uh, Pedro, we got to name some people off, man. Yes, we do. Mr. Dan Testerman, uh, Andreas uh, Zeiser, Zeiser, over on PayPal, he threw us a few shekels. And uh, Victus also kicked in with the Patreon. So thank you all very much. And speaking of PayPal, you can do, if you don't like Patreon for some reason, oh, before, we get, escape. before we get off the Patreon, I'm sorry, minimal shilling segment, bear with us. <laughs> Uh, you get access to our pre pre super so- shows, and if you like this oh, nonsense, yeah. extra hour every week, uh, custom RSS feed and uh, Discord. Yep. We we definitely have some Discord for you, beautiful people. But hey, man, we got some regular support. All this real quick. All the Amazons, UK, the Freedom Land, the Canadian Land, and France Land. You can help us out with that. Just click on that button. Go buy a billion dollars worth of stuff and just make it rain on us. We will love you long time. We do have a bit of a wish list. All this money and all this stuff is just going directly back into the studio. That's how it has been for the past four years and will continue to be. And those PayPal buttons. But we have magical Bitcoin donations. QR code plus the address for our wallet. And uh, we think cryptocurrencies neat. So uh, make us love it more and send us a few uh, uh, cryptos. I, I don't know how you want to do that, but let's open up and dislocate our jaws so we can inhale some sweet, sweet pie. Put it in my mouth. Well, uh, you might not want to put this in your mouth. This is the Asus Stinker Board, and the uh, Edge Up Asus website gives you the breakdown of basically everything you can do with it. Uh, it's similar to your Raspberry Pis. Even the uh, format is very, very similar. Um it's the credit card shape that you've grown used to, but it has considerably higher specs. It comes with eight cores, uh, two, uh, sorry, four uh, small cores, Cortex A17, and four big cores, Cortex A. No, this isn't it. No, no, no. I'm getting my stories mixed. <laughs> Uh, Nope, Uh, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. This one comes with the Rockship RK3288 SoC, which comes with four Cortex-A17 CPUs uh, at 1.8 gigahertz. Uh, It also comes with Mali T764 graphics running at uh, at 600 megahertz. And you get four USB ports, one Ethernet port, one HDMI 1.4, So you're limited if for some reason you decide to plug it into a 4K monitor, you're limited to um, 30 hertz. But if you're using Tinker OS, which is the OS that Asus has provided for this board, since it's not as open as a Raspberry Pi, uh, even just a regular desktop at 4K will just be upscaled 1080p. So keep that in mind. And if you want to play, say, 4K video... Uh, with hardware acceleration, and that's really the only way you're going to do it, you need to use the Tinker OS media player. And I'm guessing that's not open source yet, if it will ever be. Something else uh, that uh, Asus rightly mentions in this, um, in this preview, you need a 5 volt 2.5 amp USB power brick to drive this thing. Uh, so unless you have a particularly power hungry tablet laying around, uh, I know uh, my uh, NVIDIA Shield is considerably power hungry, but even its uh, USB brick that you can plug to the wall is only 2.1 amps. So even that wouldn't be enough. I think I think it's a recommended power for the Raspberry Pi 3, isn't it? I think mm-hmm. it's 2.5. 
Spotify vibes too. I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think it yeah. is. I mean, if you buy a Raspberry Pi three uh, with a bundle, you might get one of those as well. Oh, cool. uh, yeah, I find I find it neat that Asus went and made their custom OS based on Debian. That's really mm -hmm. cool on their parts. I mean, uh, Asus there have been like up and downs related regarding Linux. If you remember, they they used to ship uh, netbooks with Linux, and then they were back to to Windows. Uh, but yeah, usually they they they, they do uh, now they they do. Have, a good support for Linux, and yeah, they did good job on them. I do think as well that they lowered the price on the board. Uh, yeah, they did. Correctly. It was originally going to be sixty or seventy dollars, and now yeah, it's fifty-five. Almost, almost fifty-five. But good luck on finding one at that <laughs> price because well, I've even looked at fifty-five. Amazon. Man, I, I kind of feel a lot of these companies outside of the clones and even the same form factor, they, they kind of miss the idea of the pie. The pie was like under twenty quid, you know. So yeah, yeah it is a tinker board. It is neat. It does four K video, but so so does my tablet, and I'd probably have a lot more fun with that. And if I was going to build a project, Arduino, or you know, a Pi three. Bit over uh, fifty-five bucks. Uh, that's still not insta buy for me. But let's turn up that volume. Okay, Raspberry does run on two point five amps. Yeah, so th this next project is uh, for some guy who has like a flat screen TV and a Sonos Connect amp, mm -hmm. and he wanted to control the the, the amp like. He wanted to play the, the song from the TV with the speakers uh, and control the, the speakers with his regular remote control, which he couldn't do because he had to use either his computer or the mobile app to do that. So what he did is use a Raspberry Pi madness. Zero. What he did was madness. <laughs> Just go ahead and say it. <laughs> um, and, and use a re IR receiver on the, the Pi Zero to control the uh, the Sonos amp uh, with HTTP calls. It's, it's kind of neat. It uses uh, LRRC to uh, to control, like to, to interface with the, the remote control. Uh, and then it sends back the, the signals to um, to the amp via the their API. So this is really cool. It gave me this idea of doing the reverse, complete opposite. In that I would like to, to control my TV, like turn it off, turn it off, like switch the inputs from my PC or from a mobile device. So probably if I s replace the receiver with an amateur and I kind of reverse engineer the, the remote control, I could probably do that, I think. Yeah, it was definitely one of those wicked neat projects that I, I looked at and <laughs> I, I enjoyed how the guy kind of went through trying to justify that. Oh, you, all you got to do, all you have to say, buddy, is like, I wanted to do this because logically, no reason to do this. I'm sorry. If you own that piece of Sonos equipment, you could have bought a play bar. I even own a play bar. And, um, or you could just do it through the app. Yeah, I know it can be kind of hassle. Still wicked need something to definitely look at before we close out this delicious segment. That's right. AOSP Android TV for Raz Pi 3 712. We're getting some nougat on the Pi 3. I was all wicked, wicked excited about this. I was like, ooh, going to go play. I'm going to replace my Chromecast. And then, uh, nope, um, it's kind of slammed right there as we're looking at the bug segment. Uh, DRM content currently does not work as we do not have any certifications for this device. I could use help hacking this. Admire the spirit, though. Admire the spirit. And the, the big killer. Audio only with the YouTube app. And I was like, mm, okay, well, I can use my Plex, but if I want to watch uh, my Amazon Prime or if I want to watch Quickster, I'm not going to be able to do that. And I was like, well, at least I could watch YouTube. And I was like, nope, you can't watch YouTube either, which kind of made me just step back. And I was like, yeah, the, the, uh, 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 Pedro, what use case? Help me. I, want to I say mean, cool. it's an Android TV thing. You could play games, maybe, if they don't have DRM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I have a hard time finding the use case for this because 
Yeah, I mean, if I want to have an Android device, I would just use a tablet with a Chromecast. And for Raspberry Pi, I would just use one of the superior Linux-based alternative, like uh, Open Alec uh, for for video or whatever the Plex equivalent is, uh, or a Laka for gaming or RetroPie. I mean, you get yeah. so much, many more options, like in the GNU Linux world, as opposed to Android. Hmm. Seems legit. Right. Um, hey. If you want to talk to us, man, head over to linuxgamecast.com, hit that contact button, and uh, got a couple of rules. See if you can follow them. Pick the right show, LGC Weekly, and Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Hey, man, pick the right one. Uh, a little bit of a captcha. Thoughts, hints, ideas, whatever you have going on. Maybe you have some questions. Maybe you have some ideas like I just said, or maybe it's just like, man, you guys don't know what you're talking about. Here, let me lay some logic on you, and you do just that. That is even better. But when you do stuff like that, we end up with stuff like this yes uh, mr josh he asked this because we, last week we were talking about the that person who decided to play with its rgb leds on his uh, motherboard and uh oh is it gigabyte or msi it wouldn't give him the light of day and wouldn't share the spec sheet MSI. so he msi yeah uh he went out of his way and created basically reverse engineered the rgb controller and josh asks any idea if that msi motherboard rgb program works on other msi motherboards like the z270a for intel uh or is it just for msi amd motherboards or does it just light up circles instead of the rgb lights on the motherboard now that particular um rgb controller is for the Ryzen chips because it doesn't just control the RGB lights on the motherboard. If you have the Wraith cooler that has the RGB circle at the top mm -hmm. of the heatsink, that will also, the moment you plug it in, you can also control those RGB lights with that program. So I don't know if, if the Z270A Gaming M3 uses the same RGB controller, maybe you can use it just on the I motherboard. Am, I'm going to go short answer, no. Uh, long answer, uh, nope. Hashtag long answer. <laughs> because Probably, uh, yeah. that chip was a custom chip for that board. Um, your mileage may vary. Uh, tr try it out. I mean, if it bricks it, uh, tell them uh, somebody else told you to do it because I didn't tell you to do it. Can't blame me. And, oh man, the right, that Ryzen YOLO swag heat sink with a blink <laughs> I hope it's really easy to clip the leads in that thing, or I'm going to be doing a lot of time cutting out uh, electrical tape to cover that <laughs> up. Before we get out of here, um, my old buddy, Monster Winbro Cameron, um, he, he writes, because um, we were talking about the uh, AMD uh, 5, 580 yep. last week. He's, I swear you guys don't think the question is why AMD compares their new cards to older NVIDIA cards, comma, right, question mark. The answer is obvious. It is marketing to those who are looking to upgrade from the compared cards or older. Is it the relative increase from the previous gen to make the product seem more attractive? It is. All right. Ow, I'm helping. Yes. <laughs> you kind of... <laughs> that was your fault. Uh, but yeah, no. Okay, Cameron. Um, you yourself just admitted that they are comparing it to the Maxwell chips. The, it was the 560 specifically that they compared against the 970 and the 750 Ti. Uh, you, you yourself just admitted that they are comparing it to the Maxwell chips to make it look more attractive. You're the one that didn't listen because we said that if they were comparing it against the Pascals, probably wouldn't look so great now, would it? No, he, he listened perfectly. It's just that he has, he, he has a crush on you, Pedro, and he likes it when you get angry at him. <laughs> totally, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, man, as, as we're definitely going to be talking about on the Saturday show. What are you talking about, Ben? That's craziness. Uh, we, we do a gaming show just about Linux gaming. We've been doing it for like four years. Uh, come check that out. We're going to be talking about, turn, turns out you kind of just uh, flash the uh, five, 580 BIOS on it and um, upgrade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you were going to compare the new uh, the the new gen chips with uh, the old gen, well, I'll just compare it with the current gen as well. I mean, it's good to have like a comparison with the older chips for those who want to upgrade. But if you want to upgrade, then you have to compare it with the other stuff on the market to know if you're going to get that crappy AMD 
chip or a good NVIDIA GPU. <laughs> See, you're just, you're just making friends, man. You're just making friends. That's why I love you, baby. Hey, that's going to do it for this Wednesday. We'll be back next Wednesday. Check us out. Uh, ben Vinstone at Vinstone. Twitter nuts. Uh, plus Vinstone G pluses. I'll, I'll definitely try to scream back in your direction. If you're Patreon, uh, you don't have access to our Discord server, just like scroll down on the Patreon page, control F Discord, you'll you'll find a link. Yep. I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me on Discord or on uh, Twitter at an account at four or on Google Plus plus Pedro Mateos. And you can find me at Strikor or plus Mateo Commodo on Google Plus. Uh, but mostly on Lotris related stuff. So Lotris Gaming on Twitter or also on uh, Google Plus. Okay, we'll see, you, see you next week, beautiful people. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 And I can see you're in chat, Monster Cameron. Patreon.com forward slash Lutris. <laughs> That's never stopped me before. It's not going to stop me today. I was not really trolling you when, you when you walk into chat and you're like, hey guys, I'm here. And I was like, oh, no. Just, I, <laughs> just in time. By the way, Stick it, around. just so you know, it was on 10. Here it goes. Click. Now it's on 11. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thirty-six. Okay, that probably was my fault on the um, um, uh, workstation thing. I got distracted.